Hello, let's cut to the chase. For hosting large language models locally, you mainly need two things, a relatively recent PC and a good GPU. But what does good really mean in this context? Well, it really boils down to two things, fast GPU clock speed and what's much more important, as much VRAM as you can possibly get within your budget. You might already have your first valid question, why not AMD? And the answer is somewhat simple. Most AI software and open source projects do not really support running on AMD graphics cards or if they do, they don't really run that well. There are many reasons for this state of things, including insufficient support from AMD themselves, high industry adoption level of Nvidia GPUs when it comes to AI software, and software developers designing the software to utilize CUDA cores, which are exclusive to Nvidia cards. All in all, if you don't want to completely lock yourself out from some AI software and or spend a lot of time troubleshooting, you're better off getting an Nvidia GPU, at least for now. As I don't want this video to get too long, I will leave some more info about that in the description below. Let's get back on track and get to the optimal GPU parameters for local large language model inference. As many of you might already know, in all of the software letting you converse with AI language models, a model needs to be fully loaded into the GPU memory for you to be able to generate any text responses using it. Language models tend to have a huge amount of parameters and reach extremely large sizes, and although there are already quite a few tricks to load them into your GPU memory in lower precision using various quantization methods, sacrificing some output quality for the ability to run some smaller models even on cards with as little as 8GB of VRAM, it's still not enough. In reality, with as little as 8GB of video memory, you can only do so much before you hit your hardware limits. If you do, you are essentially either stuck with small, lower quality models loaded with low precision that you cannot really engage in long discussions with before a conversation context window will run out, or you will experience extreme slowdowns related to offloading the model data to your main system RAM. And if for some reason you'll decide to do the latter, or your software will automatically do that for you, the inference will get slow. And I mean painfully slow. This is due to the fact that your GPU is able to calculate data that's sitting snugly within its video memory very fast, but once it needs to call the RAM to bring each piece of data in before it does some crazy math on it, you'll find yourself waiting long minutes for a single longer reply from your model. Moreover, in most if not all text generation web interfaces, all your current live conversation data, or at least a large chunk of it, has to be constantly fed back to the model for it to remember the context of your conversation. All this so-called context window data is also being held in your graphics card video memory. If you run out of VRAM during your chat, you won't be able to continue and generate more text within the context of your ongoing conversation scope. What about the max GPU clock speed? I'll be brutally honest, it doesn't really matter that much. Every recent high-end graphics card, and by recent I mean virtually any GPU manufactured in the last 2 or 3 years, is fast enough to give you almost ChatGPT-like quick responses with the right configuration. The problem with large language model inference in all of your fancy locally hosted text generation web interfaces lies solely in the VRAM limits of most consumer GPUs, and that is what you should be concerned with in the first place. As most consumer graphics cards max out at 24GB of VRAM and we're not going to get into SLI configurations here, my first advice is to always go for a GPU with 24GB of video memory if only you can afford it. Currently the two cards that fulfill this condition are the RTX 4090 and the RTX 3090. So let's talk about these two first. The RTX 4090, as you might already know, is at the time of recording this video the absolute best GPU your money can get you. And it's not cheap by any means. Still, as I've said, giving you access to 24GB of VRAM, it's among the two cards that will be the most interesting for us here. If money isn't the issue, go for your favorite version of this overpriced beauty and you most certainly won't have any complaints with running large language models or any other local AI software for that matter. Next up is the RTX 3090 Ti, which is actually the most cost-effective option on this list. It's the only other card here which offers you 24GB of VRAM in calculation speeds not falling much behind the 4th generation of Nvidia graphics cards. This is the card you can safely bet on when building or upgrading your setup for locally hosted large language models. Getting two of these and setting them up in a multi-GPU SLI configuration which they can support can give you as much as 48GB of VRAM for a reasonable but still nowhere near low price. Overall, the 3090 Ti and the base 3090, which is just a little bit behind when it comes to performance, are one of the best choices right now when it comes to both local large language models and all of the other local AI software uses. If you want the best, most cost-effective option, this is it. Now let's quickly go over the other options, which while they won't give you the maximum amount of VRAM available on a consumer GPU, are still worth considering, taking into account their above-average performance. 
The RTX 4080 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM on board, the 4070 Ti with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and the RTX 3080 Ti with 12 gigabytes of VRAM as well are the cards that I'm talking about. That was quick, wasn't it? Well, that is because when we're talking AI, these are all very comparable when it comes to performance and pretty average when it comes to the amount of VRAM that they offer. If you can find any of them used in a good condition and for a good price, go for it. Wise, I would suggest you to rather focus on the 224GB VRAM cards that we've mentioned previously. By the way, you can find links to every card mentioned in this video in the description below. And here is the budget choice you might just have been waiting for, the RTX 3060. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, this is neither the best performing card on this list nor does it have a large amount of VRAM on board. However, it is affordable. And that's something considering that it is still a reasonably powerful card from the third generation of the RTX GPUs and it does have 12GB of VRAM which you can use to load some of the more basic models without much trouble. As of now, you can get it new for around $300 and used for much much less. Of course it probably goes without saying that all of the cards that I'm mentioning in this video and in the description below will work perfectly well with your local Stable Diffusion and Stable Diffusion XL image generation web UIs, RVC model voice cloning, AI cover making, live voice changing and all of the other AI software you can find. Still, if large language models are your priority, pick the card with the most VRAM you can afford. Currently, this is the way if you want to go all out when it comes to local AI chat extravaganza. I hope I was able to help you. If I did, please do leave a like or a comment and feel free to use the links in the description below to check out the cards I mentioned in this video. Thank you and see you next time.